G'day guys, how are we doing? Hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday or hump day as we call it. Yeah, I'd be having a more wonderful hump day if uh, if I didn't set this trade on an EA this morning. A little bit disappointed uh, because I traded this bar here this morning as a um, as a nice rejection of the daily pivot yesterday's daily pivot. And I thought this would be a nice place to take a short, uh, getting profit around about this level here, and then exiting around about the monthly pivot. Well, it all happened in a very, very short space of time. Too fast, in fact, for the EA to handle it. And by that, I mean uh, the EA has a protective mechanism in it that says if the slippage is going to be too great, we don't want to be in the trade. So clearly the slippage was too great for the EA, the way it's preset. And guess what? I didn't get in the market. We didn't get the trade. Damn. Never mind. Um, on the other side of the coin, I guess the Aussie yen trade that we were in went exactly to target, to monthly pivot. And of course, we were already in that trade. I have closed it. Uh, I have closed it just on the monthly pivot or just above the monthly pivot there. Um, probably looking to get back into that at some stage, but uh, that will do me for now. That's around about a five to one trade, so no, no damage to getting out of there. And I think that's probably a wise thing to do. Uh, look, time will prove me correct or otherwise, of course. Perhaps it just keeps going and going and going. If that's the case, then so be it. Um, I'm happy to take five to one any time. And if we do get a retracement and maybe a second op or third opportunity, as it were, to get into this trade, um, we might take advantage of that. So uh, there you go. That's pretty much now my um, my trading at a standstill until we do get a few pullbacks and and the like, and then we can look to get into the market. Let's see what's around about the place in terms of news and data releases on this, the 24th day of April. Aussie news out already. That's why you're seeing those big moves in the Aussie short um, because the CPI figure came in flat at zero. Uh, look, that's not unprecedented, but uh, it hasn't and doesn't happen too often, I would have to say. Uh, if we have a look at the, the detail on that, the chart in particular this century that has happened once twice three times four times five times only before today so five out of goodness me how many is that 19 by four 76 it's not 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 a great number is it really so um you can uh, you can understand why the Aussie has tanked today and tanked very dramatically and very rapidly. Very very interesting. What that what's that going to mean to the Aussie? I was kind of waiting to get long. To be fair, uh, based on the technicals, I'll show you those in a tick. But that seemed to be long gone. And how and if I even want to get back into this um, into the long, I'm not too sure. Always when you get a, a, a nice move like this, you're expecting uh, some sort of uh, consolidation or retracement throughout the UK session. We'll see if that's going to be the case. And if we have in, any interest in trading it, I suspect probably not, but you never know what might turn up in, uh, in the wonderful world of currency trading. In about an hour and uh, a half, or hour and 40 minutes, 50 minutes from now, roughly, we're going to have some German news out. Uh, we're also going to have some pound news at 9.30 GMT. Yeah, look, mediocre news and not particularly going to, uh, or the forecast is not particularly strong as a miss in either direction. A um, little bit off, but we'll see how that pans out. Not sure that's going to move the market too much. Big moves already today, and uh, the dollar seems to be strengthening. Uh, Ash was really keen on that yesterday. I wonder if he's managed to get into any positions. CAD news is the uh, flavour of the day, of course, as we have 
the uh, MPR, the Monetary Policy Report, the rate statement, and, of course, the press conference. All coming your way when I'm asleep this uh, this evening and uh, waking up fairly early because it is Anzac Day in the Antipodean uh, countries of New Zealand and Australia. Anzac, of course, being the, uh, the uh, alliance that was formed during the wars that have taken place over the years and that Anzac tradition will be celebrated tomorrow as usual. Uh, it normally starts with a dawn service and uh, I'm not sure I'll be up for that. I'll we'll see. Um, and you start drinking rum around about six o'clock in the morning and have a very, very big day. Two up, uh, those of you who don't know what two up is, it was a game devised by natural Australians in the in the trenches well not exactly playing in the trenches but um certainly when they, they weren't in the trenches they were throwing two coins two pennies in the air and if they came down heads then the people who who chose heads won the money if they came down tails then obviously the reverse of that was the case there'll be a whole lot of that going on in australia and new zealand more australia than new zealand tomorrow and uh, of course the italians celebrate of that I don't think they call it Anzac Day, but they also celebrate that day. Well, as I, when I say celebrate, it's more a commemoration, but certainly it turns into a celebration. And no doubt I'll be partaking in some of that at some stage tomorrow. Um, Thursday, we've got the second big uh, news event of the week, and that is the Bank of Japan's monetary policy statement and press conference. That's could be very interesting. I have been waiting for the pound to strengthen for quite a while, but yeah, it's not like the BOJ to come out and, and make their currency strengthen. We'll see how that all pans out. And the only uh, the only other things that we're waiting on uh, for the rest of the week will be uh, not so much for me on Friday because I probably won't be trading. Uh, but the Swiss National Bank Chairman Jordan speaks, and we have advanced GDP figures out in the States. I did forget to call durable goods orders, of course, month on month. Also, tomorrow, I won't be trading tomorrow because I'll be probably celebrating. Um, <laughs> that's that's a, a given. Well, that's pretty much it as far as news and, uh, and data releases are concerned. What is the market thinking is where I head next. And it looks pretty red to me, which uh, is a little bit interesting because it means everything's going backwards. Yeah, you can see the effect of the Aussie news here uh, in the past 48 hours and, of course, the past 12 hours, which is the majority of that, but it was on the way down, of course. Uh, Kiwi's uh, gone down with it. Um, anything against the yen, it would seem, is also on the way down, but the dollar looks to be strong. And if you read across the board here, apart from, I guess, the two risk off currencies, Swissy and Yen, uh, the dollar's doing very, very well. So it's looking that way that we've got a strong greenback. That's no surprise to the man who's uh, joined me now. Ash was tipping this, so I wonder how long it can last, Ash. Well, I mean, if uh, if the tips are correct and it'll last all, uh, you know, right into next month, um, we've got the um, golden week coming up on the 27th of April. And that may just see some people ease out of the uh, the Nikkei 225 and, and maybe, uh, you know, buy a little bit of um, bit of safety with the yen. Uh, the dollar is also kind of tipped to be <clears throat> pretty strong. But the the Aussie has just been I mean, what a great trade, mate. The, the Aussie has been uh on the move early and as i say it, you know that this may well uh, carry right through into next month because that's what the statistical probabilities are you know certainly uh, for, for the aussie to be the weakest of, uh, of all currencies coming up and if that is the case then we could be looking at the aussie probably at least back down to uh, 77 um, I would have thought it's uh, currently at 78.62. So if it doesn't get there in the next few days, then uh, it just needs to close below its open. So, you know, as long as it starts the next month above that 77 mark, then uh, I wouldn't be surprised to sit down there uh, whatsoever. M maybe, maybe even lower than that. Who, who knows? I mean, it, you know, it's, uh, 
it rejected the 70 level but um it, it, there's there's every chance and, and possibility that we uh, we could break the 77 lows and, and if that's the case if we break through lows. uh sorry mate i'm looking at the aussie yen um oh, the yen sorry okay yeah uh, just just because the yen actually looks like the, the strongest currency yep okay. of uh, of the lot so um it's it, uh, it would certainly um, start to appear that so that that could be the case and and also when you look at uh, I'll quickly show you you know just just what I've got on my screen here sure um, let's bring this over here and share. When you look at um, the, uh, the the Aussie yen here, uh, I mean, forget the hourly. We, we know why that has uh, come to to, uh, to to look like this. But when we look at this on the monthly, a bar like this um, at a uh, fairly decent point of resistance here would suggest uh, a significant um, uh, sell-off. So, uh, well, it doesn't really su suggest a significant sell-off. That's that's not right. But it does suggest a sell-off. So, uh, you know, a, a huge rejection really this month. Huge rejection because it was, all, by all intents and purposes, it looked like it was on its way, but uh, but that has been refused. So I would be looking at um, at next month continuing. What what I'd quite like to see is this close around about here, just some sort of retracement into the start of the month, and then see it turn around again and uh, and, and continue to drop. But you know this this level down here at seventy seven certainly looks like it's uh, achievable um, on the uh, on the Aussie yen to me. Yeah, look, I'm now waiting for retracement. Uh, I have closed that trade. Um, got five to one out of it, so that's enough for me. I'm happy. Yeah. That. Well, just just looking at it, this is a, a monthly pivot bounce as well, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's it's the place to exit, frankly. Or, or if you want to leave something open, I could certainly understand that. But I think you'll there'll be a decent retracement here, in my humble opinion. But I, I would agree with that. And 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 what I would want to look for <clears throat> is just retesting this area here because. It didn't really, um, didn't really have much of a chance, did it? It was sort of, uh, it was wavering along there for a little while, broke through, hasn't really kind of like uh, seen this area retested. But I think if we were to start coming up, I mean, when you say significant retracement, I'm not quite sure if we get to, to this point. But um, you think that it would, uh, it would at least try and get uh, a long, a steep looking trend line. You know, that 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 area there would be uh, probably. Um, an area of interest for me now, uh, which may well be around about uh, where the daily pivot currently sits. So, something around about the seventy nine fifty, I would have thought uh, on the uh, on the Aussie yen would be an area that uh, those uh, uh, anybody that's missed this move will want to try and get in. And and as I say, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they want to try and hold from seventy nine fifty right the way down to seventy seven. Yeah, look, if I get back in, that's probably going to be my thought process as well. Uh, maybe not seventy seven the figure, but round about. 77.50 that area i think um, is not out of the question so yeah a couple of hundred pips might be available there as well um that would be very nice icing on the cake for this cross um for for the last few weeks i'd be more than happy with that that'd be pretty cool I'm yeah happy now you know i'm, I'm happy i've got to move obviously um, oh mate that was a great trade and uh and, and i wish i'd um I'd done my uh, my evidence based uh, just <laughs> a week before because I think I, I may well have joined you on something. Probably not the over the um, Aussie yen, but the the Aussie dollar. I, I certainly would have been um, a party to. Uh, and the dollar continues to strengthen. It's a, it's a it's a fascinating story, really, when you consider that um, the dollar continues to strengthen, but not against the yen. You know, the yen holds up pretty well uh, right yep. now. The the, the the dollar isn't pushing down, but it's not pushing up. So they are. Are in a little bit of a battle right now, aren't they? And and this wouldn't be a cross that I'd be particularly keen on. You know, if we if we think that we're coming into May where both dollar and the yen show signs of um show signs of strength, with the yen uh, tending to win, then um then I'd be much more interested in looking at crosses against the yen than the dollar. But um but certainly not looking at uh, a dollar yen story. But earnings yeah, again, you know, what's that mean? We'll know more tomorrow, of course, um, out of the Bank of Japan stuff that comes out. Yeah, I guess tomorrow and Friday, the GDP number on Friday is, is going to be quite a key metric. And as I say, you know, we, we've got this Japanese bank holiday, sorry, this Japanese holiday coming up, which is a, a 10 day stretch. Um, and I think that's going to that? have uh, that's the golden week uh, for uh, for, ja for Japan, um, where they have uh, the 
um, Nurohito uh, Accession, uh, the Crown Prince Nurohito Accession. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what that is, but uh, it is 10 days from the 27th of April through the, to the 6th of May, uh, um, okay. so where we get... Uh, then, then we're on holidays. Then we're on holiday. Yeah. So that could be quite interesting for the markets generally. You know, what, what do traders do? This is really what I was saying a, a, a week or so ago. What do traders want to do at this point? Because the markets have been obviously on, a, on an absolute tear and they continued to tear it up yesterday. But uh, with a holiday of 10 days uh, coming up in one of the world markets, well, you know, what's, what's going to be true that the thinking of traders, well, they want to maybe ease off a little bit with their positions because, um, you know, things could start to rock the boat and they won't have the ability to, uh, you know, m m maybe get out of positions in, in that particular time. So will they be quite happy to take profit uh, at these particular points? And if we come into the uh, the Chinese and and, and Asian uh, stock markets now, then we are seeing a little bit of weakness. You know, we we started to see a little bit of weakness over the last couple of days in the um, uh, in the China 50 here. And if we look at the the Nikkei, which I suppose must represent the Hang Seng, I'm not sure. Uh, look at the Nikkei. The Nikkei is looking like the same kind of thing. It looks to me like this area um, would be an area that, that that could actually hold out. You know, we are at um, a level of resistance, pretty scruffy, but uh, but any of these points now because of how high the market uh, has come could actually provide that um, that level of resistance. We do have something uh, of a little bit of weakness from last week as well. Might become a little bit clearer on the monthly chart, but it doesn't really. So, uh, but the uh, but the Nikkei is uh, is just starting to, to weaken a little bit. S and P yesterday tearing it up, uh, continuing to move to the upside, and actually. When we look at the daily charts here, it just about Not eked out. Mm. Well, I mean, it's uh, it, it was it was pretty close, but uh, I think um, uh, by all intents and purposes, this uh, the, these are the futures. So if we let me show you on a different chart here, uh, look at this here. In fact, let's start with the Nikkei, uh, sorry, the NASDAQ. This is the NASDAQ. And let's bring in this on, let's go four years. If you can just see that, but the NASDAQ closed above its uh, all time highs here. These are the all time mm -hmm. highs over here. So this, this is the actual cash that the NASDAQ. So yesterday closing above its high fairly significantly as well. Uh, a really good move to the upside. Hugely overbought up here. You know, when, when we consider these levels here, this is 81 uh, right now with the NASDAQ. And it doesn't often get up to 81. There's the 81 line there. So you can see in the last four years, it's been up here three times and it has provided somewhere in these areas, it's, it's provided a, a a little bit of a softening. This is just a, a softer area, but um, you know, down uh, in this area, it actually did provide <clears throat> something of a uh, of more of a significant pullback. And certainly this one up here did provide a, a whacking great pullback. So there's a chance that, uh, you know, and look at the volatility down here as well. There's a volatility index down here. Again, low volatility, the market drives forward. And uh, and all of a sudden, we start to see the market just start, to, you know, really, really tank to the downside. Again, uh, NASDAQ is overbought up here. Volatility extremely low. Uh, and, you know, you, you've got to beware up here. But this, this is the, you know, as, as, as we were saying before, the difficulty of this is that, you um, it uh, means that you just end up missing out on uh, on something which is a really good run, you know, while, while caution's in play here. This is the S&P and the S&P's closing highs were up here and didn't quite get there. So it's uh, very, very close on the S&P as well. Um, but again, overbought territory doesn't uh, doesn't uh, stay up here uh, all, all that long on the whole. Volatility extremely low. So uh, caution uh, really kind of coming into play. We have also got on the 27th of May, Donald Trump and Xi Jinping uh, and the rest of the clan continuing their trade talks. 
not uh, a done deal as yet. Uh, very positive um, uh, whispers coming out of uh, the trade talk so far, and, and, it, and it has helped boost the markets to the upside. But as yet, Trump we haven't really. Only, or the Chinese. Uh, well, well, yeah, no, actually both. Yeah, both both okay. are, uh, have come out and, and, and said fairly positive things about the, the negotiations and how they're going. So uh, so you'd have to you'd have to kind of um, probably trust that for right now. But, the you know, the, 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 it sounds like there's still some hurdles to, to, to get over. And we are getting extremely close to an announcement on that. And I, and I suspect if we get a positive announcement, that could be the real trigger that takes these markets significantly higher. Um, this is the FTSE 100. Back to this uh, this particular chart. FTSE 100 is also kind of getting around these points of potential resistance without really uh, showing where it is it, it could reverse. This area, as I said yesterday, would be an area that um, I'd be uh, much more keen to just say, let's just sell it off and, and see what happens. But you can see with the, the way that the bars are, the momentum is just starting to shrink here to the upside. You know, it's slowing down. I'd like to see what happens by the end of the week. This is going to be probably more to do with, as you said uh, earlier, that the uh, the, the, the um, Japanese uh, announcement and probably uh, GDP from the United States of America. We we also have some earnings uh, from the banking sector this week, and that could affect the FTSE 100. But earnings out of the states yesterday, 80% of S and P companies have uh, posted earnings which beat expectation, and that is what has allowed this rally to continue to this point. Mm. Um, you know, just when you think things are priced in, something else comes out, which is uh, which is further positive. But, you know, as, as you said yesterday, mate, when markets do this, they, they, they never go in one direction. If they went in one direction, this whole thing would be easy. Um, they um, they retrace and sometimes they retrace a little bit and sometimes they retrace viciously and sometimes they retrace um, more gently and sometimes they retrace deeply. So, it's you know, they, they, there's so many different connotations that could happen. Um, but the other thing is, Sometimes, if we look at this on a uh, on a weekly chart here, sometimes they just don't retrace. You know, so I suppose okay. looking at this on, on a weekly, that there is there is there are points that it does retrace, but um, but this this particular um, run that we've had has been pretty astonishing. So I think we're all a little bit nervous about uh, about the move to the upside. But you have to say the data just continues to sweep away any negative um, uh, possibilities. And, and you look for the next thing. Could it be the the, uh, the, the, the the breakdown of negotiations? Could it be a weaker GDP number than expected? Uh, could it be some unforeseen event? And you just, uh, you know, maybe maybe pin your, pin your hopes on that one being the retracement that gets us into the market. But none of them are providing the... Um, the uh the, the catalyst right now mm, and as much as they are meat on the bones for people to go okay i can bite into that absolutely you know and, and 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 yes it's overbought you know the, the market is overbought it is there's a, a low volatility environment but um but the, but that's it you know it just uh but that's the only um thing that uh that that, that we are able to to uh, really go on right now because Nothing is shoving this down, um, and at this stage, it's very, very difficult to look for the shorts, and, and it, not wise actually, just not wise to look for the shorts at all. It'll give, mate. One day, it'll just turn up and go right. I'm back, and you can trade me now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just a, it's, waiting, but you know, that's just the way it is. It's just irritating. You know, what what you did with the yen, the Aussie yen, is a, is a great move, and there's nothing more frustrating in trading than uh, missing an opportunity and obviously the opportunity here has been uh, uh, pretty uh, extreme but um but it's just one of those things when you miss it you just have to accept it and wait for the next one but it does make trading a little bit boring for right now for me well uh speaking of misses my trade of the day today was aussie cad short and this is in this morning show right i'll show you show you what happened i don't think you're in the room when i described it earlier no Interesting. We, we were talking about the Aussie CAD short a few weeks ago, weren't we? Yeah, we were. And I saw this bar mm. on the 4-hour chart. Mm, lovely. This morning. So placed my order here, put my stop here nice and tight, and bingo, straight down to target. Guess you. what happened? <laughs> the EA wouldn't trigger the trade because the slippage was too great. Oh, um, you're kidding. No. 
Uh, so I missed it. Missed the bloody whole lot. So and what that, would that mean? I mean, you know, if you'd put the order in, uh, if you'd put the order in MT4, would that have triggered it? It was four to one. Uh, had I put it directly in MT4, yes. But because at that time of day, I'm only in front of the charts for 10, 15 minutes. I can't be there to, to manage it. So I just put it on automatic pilot. And cool. the automatic pilot, as a protective me mechanism, in inverted commas, this has happened before, you know, it happened not long ago. I remember, um, mate, yeah, I remember you, you having this, this issue before and, and actually called the broker about it, didn't you? I don't know that I did because I worked out that it was the AA's fault, not not any other fault. Right. So, yeah, there's one that got away, sadly, but that's the way it goes. Uh, what else was we talk were we talking about? Oh, uh, miss, missing trades, yeah. Um, missing opportunities, yeah. Well, you know, that one there is well, – I didn't miss it. <laughs> I was right on top of it, but sadly, uh, nothing to show for it. That was – I hope the other guys got uh, – I hope the guys who were in the show actually got that trade because it was very, very nice. I have uh, – I don't know. I've, I've kind of got this – not Euro, I was a Euro. I kind of got this Euro thing, and uh, it was the, the Aussie thing as well, but it's no longer the Aussie thing right now, I don't think because the Aussie has just gone too far. I was waiting for the Aussie this, this morning uh, to show me some signs here that we can actually trade the bounce off the uh, off the monthly pivot. But, um, of course, the news changed that very, very rapidly. And I don't think right now that I've got any prospect of trading this at all, uh, much less long. So uh, lots of work to do there. I, I don't know... You know, I'm not as confident as others that this is just going to disappear. The Aussie, I, I can totally see it. Yeah, I can totally see it. But yeah. we're at a very, at a very strong support level right now. Yeah, and and maybe that will be the the tail of the tape. You know, if this level goes, if the seventy level goes, as you said before, uh, then you know the Aussie's in a, a whole heap of trouble. But um, until that happens, and it may well happen today, the way things are going. Uh, until that happens, I've still got this this image in my uh, in my head of maybe the four hour charts, the, the one that stands out more than anything. Uh, I've still got this. All I did have up until today, uh, this scenario where we've come off a, a double bottom, if you like, um, put in higher highs, higher low, higher high, higher low. If you want to. You know, use your imagination a little bit. Uh, and that looked like it was going to be a great place for a bounce, which is what I said before. I was looking for, for an opportunity to trade this long until the news came. News is a wonderful, wonderful thing. It can, depending on what it is and uh, at what part of the market or what part of the, the um, sentiment cycle, I suppose you'd call it, for want of a better word, it's where the market is or what the market's thinking, depending on when, when that happens and what it is uh, as to whether it's going to be a sustainable move or otherwise. This one certainly looks to be uh, testing or willing to test the lows down here at the 70 mark. And I, su I suppose you've got to think that's going to be the case. But if it's not, then again, we're playing a different game. You know, if, if that news can't drive the Aussie down to this level then something else is happening. And yeah. if that's the case, and that's where I'll probably look for signals and signs that um, we're not going there, and that'll probably come in the form of, I don't know, some sort of reversal and then a higher low, uh, then I'll I'll go back to being a, a, a bull for, I don't know how long, frankly, but, you know, certainly up to this area, up to the top of the range has been broken. But for now... Uh, I can't trade this. It's just gone ski, and that's yeah. all there is to it. Whereas I still can trade Aussie yen with a pullback. That'll be fine. Uh, the euro. Now, my chart's frozen for some reason. There we go. The euro, I've got to go back to this chart. Uh, again, the four-hour chart, where we've had a match, if you like, of... I, you probably don't call that a hammer. It's... 
what's that Campbell what do you call that is it oh, well, what, what time frame are you on four hour you're on the four hour uh well it's like a spinning top oh well, the, uh, well there, there is a hammer um a few in but yeah the last the last uh, four hours a spinning top no I'm over here oh gosh um well yeah there's a load of spinning tops let me see so you're on the second of April yep Let's have a look at that. Probably on the daily, it does look like a hammer on the second of April. Yeah, I mean, it 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 would it doesn't quite qualify, but I think the yeah. fact that it kind of like had that low there, I would treat it like it was a hammer. Yeah, well, that's what I keep seeing, uh, and I, you know, it 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 matched the low, and generally that's the case when you see a hammer match a low, uh, you'll generally get some sort of rally, which is exactly what happened. Yeah. Now we've got this. Big reversal bar here, Un totally untradeable, but it's kind of giving me the same sort of signal. Of course, at the moment, we're going to uh, have a, a test of this theory. And if, of course, the low of this candle goes, then all bets are off. But at yeah. this point in time, that's still dominating, dominating for me. And uh, it's, it's not the fact that it's a bearish bar. It's the fact that it's a reversal bar, in my humble opinion, or almost a reversal bar. Uh, and it's pretty strong for mine that we've rejected this level for a third time. And uh, I've got this funny feeling I'll still be looking for longs here in the not too, unless this low goes again. If, if that goes, all bets are off. But uh, I, I can still see potential here to trade this long. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wishful thinking. I don't know. I seem to have this empathy for uh, for the euro dollar, and whenever I see pain coming or potential pain coming, I also see the potential for uh, that pain to end, <laughs> and that's that's probably where I'm at at the moment. There's a, there's a lot of uh, sentiment goes into my my thinking on euro dollar as well as what yeah. I see technically, and, and what I see technically is still um, a high low. So. That's Absolutely, mate. Well, uh, just um, just on that, you know, the the, the German um, EFO business climate may actually drive the, the the euro up a little bit. They are forecasting for that to be higher. Yeah, um, um, whether that's pretty poor numbers, aren't they? Years, I don't know, but yeah. Well, well, uh, on the shorter term, I, it's not. Uh, it's not. It's certainly not. Um, it's significant enough news to take this in the opposite direction. No, no. You know, significantly, but uh, but certainly on the short term, anybody that's looking to sell the euro off, I, I think that they they may well find that um, that that could provide uh, an opportunity uh, to to get a better price um, well, rather than yeah, anything else. On the four hour chart, you've got a genuine hammer on on the euro. Yes, gosh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's but, but, here, so. <laughs> I suppose the problem is with that one, the four hour uh, did provide a hammer and we've had a rally off the back of that hammer, um, but, it it, but it hasn't mm. lasted. Mm. So, the, the, and, and as you said before, you know, the euro dips below this level, then uh, it's in an, or oh, it's in a, a world oh, yeah. of pain, isn't it? It's in the SHMPs, um, that's right. It really is. And, and when you think about uh, the fact that the dollar does tend to strengthen uh, throughout May uh, in comparison to the euro, um, uh, a, um, a, f a fairly significant amount of time, then the euro really could be um, uh, about to, I mean, we, we could be ready to turn the light almost off you know, on the euro, the way that this is going to move, not not uh, not that it's going to collapse as a currency uh, by any stretch. I'm not I'm not saying that, but um, but I think to see the euro down to uh, the one one zero five level, one zero uh, yeah one zero five level, one zero fifty level. I I I think that there's 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 every chance of that. If it finally breaks down, then I agree with you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it'll test the lows of uh, two thousand. When was it 2016? I can't remember. 2017, yeah, 2017. it is. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Christmas time, 2016. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, mate, almost the perfect slingshot trade yesterday on pound yen. Almost perfect. Yeah, God, that was a good call too. Yeah, look, um, our target was just below the monthly pivot, and I missed it. 
You missed I the target. I missed the target by I don't know how much. Um, I didn't actually measure it, but what I did do as soon as I saw that bar is I moved my stops up. So I locked in some profit, but just needed, a, a, I think, one or two pips more to get that target. But, you know, classic trade, absolutely classic trade where you've got a break of the daily pivot and trend line, retest of that, entry there, target there, easy, easy piece. Yeah, yeah. Except we, except we didn't hit the bloody thing. Yeah. But as I say, as soon as I saw that bar, I knew there was, um, there was trouble and uh, I moved my stops up to where pretty much where that red line is, as a matter of fact. And, and I understand what, you know, when you saw all like saying about um, buying the selling bar instead of the uh, putting a, um, a, a buy stop above the buying bar, I suppose the difficulty with that is that you're always going to be tr um, trading into a trend line, aren't you? Putting you're always going to be trading into it. If, if, if you, uh, like yesterday, you, d you did the Aussie where you, um, where yep. you traded the, the buying bar. Yep. Um, if you traded this on the seller's bar, then you're trading right into resistance. If I traded it here. Yeah, if you're buying buying at that it. point, you're, yep. Yep. yeah, you're buying right into resistance, which is the difficult thing about the strategy, isn't it? You know, which is why your strategy uh, actually provides a higher probabilities. Maybe it doesn't provide quite the same rewards, but uh, but surely more often Most than definitely. not, yeah, that that's not going to um, uh, get through that uh, that resistance point. It's been rejected yeah, once. It's all context, isn't it? Um, yeah, it, it, it depends on where, and if you've got a potential reversal, which is what we had on the Aussie yen, then I think it's worth the risk. Uh, if you've got this situation where you're actually in a range. Uh, probably isn't, and that's probably the difference, I suppose. But you're absolutely right. Uh, what happens here is, and this is why we do what we do. You're going to get these about eighty percent of the time. You're going to hit TP one anyway, about eighty yeah. percent of the time. But the trade-off there is reward. So yes, it's the same old story. High risk, high reward. Low risk, low reward. And yep. it, I choose to trade low risk, and that's yep. perfectly fine by me. Well, it, the, the 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 fascinating thing with that is that you, you do choose to uh, to to trade low risk, but um, uh, if the Aussie counter triggered, that's that's a four to one. You you got a five to one out of the Aussie yen. I know that was a, a slightly higher <laughs> risk trade, uh, you know, with that. Um, but uh, but you know. Week, Oh God, mate! You've had a, you've had an amazing time. Thank God you're in the room. <laughs> well, you know, there's not a whole lot of volume trading for me going on, but if you're prepared to just watch and wait, you know, you can pick them off when they do come. Yeah, yeah. And that's the patience so, thing, you know. If you force yourself into the market all the time, you're going to be in trouble. But if you're just ready to wait, or, or if you're prepared to wait until the the setups come, uh, they'll come. They eventually come. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, they, they absolutely will, and, and and I suppose you know this is this is my uh, my 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 hope that uh, that it comes sooner rather than later with the FTSE 100 because uh, I've been sat on my hands for a for a few weeks here now, you know, just uh, not not able to do too much. I've I've taken you know the odd trade to the upside, but they've they've really been scalps. I've had yep. no real, I've, I've had no confidence. I don't know if confidence is the right word. I've been uncomfortable staying in uh, the, these trades for too long. And um, they've continued to push forward. But, you know, as this market comes up again, you know, I'm, I'm looking back here at the FTSE. And the FTSE is, is just starting to drift to the downside. Um, and it is a buying area uh, where we sit right now. But um, I don't particularly like, anything to do with the FTSE right now but this is this is a buyer's area of course and we'll probably see the buyers come back in again you know this, what's going to drive this to the downside but my concern is that uh at any point there could be something you know to spook the market and it does shove down and then we get uh, a significant uh, move to the downside and I'm caught in a trade to the upside that is going to be very very difficult to get out of um, with uh, with any safety, you know, because of the way I trade, because of the way I like to trade, which is really um, to buy here, 
And if the market breaks down, sell that uh, that off on a retracement, just close the trade on, on a retracement. Um, but, um, but, but you know, my, my concern is that uh, because of the way that the market has been moving to the upside, the retracement may not come for quite some time. And then I'm going to be caught in a trade to the upside that I don't really want. This area down here is a lot more palatable. I, I quite like this down here. If we bring some a little bit of detail in, this is the area that I was actually aiming for. Uh, to get get in long yesterday, and the uh, the market just didn't come down here. Uh, well, it it did just about, but there was no um, there was no trend line bounce. You know, I was looking I was looking along here. It, it came to the weekly pivot, so it it came there um, with the same price because it's the same price point now. But now the trend line actually acts as a as an extra point of support. So weekly pivot and trend line support would be an area that I'd be interested in the long. But um, but aside from uh, aside from that, I, I wouldn't be too keen on this market. And even if it comes down here, I mean, that, that's going to be a, a fairly significant retracement to the downside. I'm not sure how uh, how confident I'm going to be. I just I'm just so keen on waiting for. This point here. Those shorter term moves are um are starting to just to become less and less attractive to me you know i i th th this is this is um to bring this onto a onto a longer term time frame again you know i, I don't really want to trade here i want to trade here mm. um Part and of that is is experience that says to you this market's gone so far i don't want to jump in at the top and and get knocked over exactly Exactly. And, it, and it's difficult, isn't it? Because actually that can work against you sometimes. The, the only thing is that um, being patient means that I will get a trade eventually, but um, but it could take a while. And I miss I miss a load of really nice moves to the upside. So this it, it's, it's the, the balance of um, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty aggressive when uh, when things look good. But when they don't, I'm I'm a lot more. Um, conservative and even though this would be uh, an area that i'd be quite happy to get in uh, if it was a little bit further down in the cycle then uh you know when it comes to this po point of the cycle i'm still a little bit concerned with this area but it means that i'm going to miss another potentially another leg to the upside but eventually if i wait long enough i will get my trade it will come to this point uh, i'm almost certain of that during may and june let's say but that's a long time to wait before i can really kind of get into the market yeah, you you need to have something to uh, to put some uh, loaves and and fishes on the table, don't you? It's as simple as that. that. This is the thing, and, and you know, do, do, would I trade it short if it broke that level? And I'd have to say no. So I, I can't even get in short. You know, I can only look for longs in the current market um, conditions. But in saying that, if it starts to break down this point and breaks down this point, then the low is obviously you know the the, uh, the short is a really good proposition, but. Um, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just quite, um, I'm a bit battle wary um, of waiting. You know, what would be good for you is, is a news event that just drove it down there in oh, like a heartbeat. That's the one. Mm. That's the one, mate. Yeah, that's what I need. And, and you know what? I keep doing. I keep sort of like thinking, today's the day we're going to get Donald Trump <laughs> helping us out. You know, he hasn't helped us out for ages. He was helping us out loads before, but he's not helped us out for a long, long time. And the only thing he may do is um, is just uh, walk out of the, the negotiations with China. He's already kind of started to put the cat amongst the pigeons with Europe. He's put the cat amongst the pigeons a little bit yesterday with this um, this wavering of um, the uh, putting waivers on uh, uh, the the, the uh, Iranian uh, oil uh, s scenario because you know China do buy Iranian oil, so that, that I thought that might be a driver, but. You know, he's, he's not doing enough. He needs to kind of pull his finger out for me a little bit here. Come on, Donald. You can do it, mate. Well, he's, if anyone can, it's him, isn't it? <laughs> do you know what? All of them, the all of them, uh, all of them um, uh, of, of, of these guys are to blame, in, in my opinion. Donald Trump has been a, uh, a fantastic, um, uh, really a, a fantastic advocate of, of driving these markets in, in wild moves one way or the other. In, in actual fact, he's probably responsible for a lot of this. But the other one who, who's let us down for, on a retracement is Draghi. 
you know, Draghi kind of came out and said, yeah, recession um, pr probabilities are, are pretty low in actual fact. Uh, not too concerned about um, uh, the, uh, the, the, the conditions that we have here. Nothing like the last uh, recession. And even he is um, is quite... Uh, is uh, is quite quite hawkish, you know, from a from a uh, from a pretty low base point. He's he's fairly hawkish, you know, saying that there's no no probability of recession. It hasn't helped the euro out any uh, by any stretch. But I was hoping it wouldn't help stocks as well. I mean, it's not like he was talking them up, but he was certainly talking down the the probability of of recession. So um, you, you can't rely on anybody to help you out in this uh, in this current era, mate. No, get used to it, mate. <laughs> They're not here to help us, unfortunately. They're here to no. Do what they do, and hopefully help we themselves. Can read, read, yeah, exactly right. There's no. no do you know the the there. only other thing is that um, when I when I look at these markets, the the other thing that I I, I think is that um, the Fed has come out and said that uh, it's got a fairly dovish stance for the rest of the year, but can it realistically hold firm um, with market with conditions? Mm. Yeah, I mean, can it really do that? You know, if it, it, G, uh, CPIs aren't aren't, um, aren't aren't there yet, but if CPIs start to gather pace, earnings start to gather pace, the um, the, the market outperforms on um, on all these uh, all these projections from from these businesses. Can the Fed really hold firm? I, I mean, it, you'd, you'd have to say that uh, the Fed's job is to is to make sure that while uh, effectively make hay while the sun shines you know that's 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 what it's meant to do um and uh, and start easing back and, and rowing back on the uh, uh on the stimulus if the market doesn't need stimulating then then you know what why would it continue to do that mate uh, the only thing i can say is um if they do and they have to take it into consideration if they do go again they're they're in a, an incredible situation where the dollar will rally beyond where it needs to be uh, in, yeah. in terms of trade. Yeah, and th that will be a, a killer. Uh, whether they actually take and they, and they say they don't really take it into consideration, um, but mm, gee, there be some pressure on them. I would imagine not. To yeah, do yeah. I, and I do you know the know, other thing? I really don't know. You see, the other thing about uh, about these charts as well, um, and the, the other reason that I'm really nervous about the long is that, uh, and I know this is this is probably it's a it's a strange habit to know whether this is a good habit or a bad habit in in some respects, but to a degree, <clears throat> some of the um, some of the, uh, the, the 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 job that we have is to try and ascertain what is about to happen. Um, and, uh, well, in fact, maybe that's all of it. We're trying to, we're trying to ascertain what's about to happen. We're speculating on, on a particular direction and some of the way that that's done. And it's probably, as I say, probably a bad habit rather than a good one is to look at the bars and how they are forming. And I, and I keep coming back to this weekly chart here because the weekly chart has provided a hanging man. The hanging man got swept aside, but with a pretty small bar. And now we have this bar forming. And what always concerns me is that I'm going to get in a long and this ends up being a reversal bar because, you know, that's where, that's where it's starting to shove down. And as it forms like this, I'm looking for it to continue to give me some sort of reversal bar. And then we start to see the market uh, ease to the downside from, uh, from next week, let's say. So that's the, other, that's the other aspect of this. Now, the other thing that I did yesterday was I was just looking at the, um, the inverted head and shoulders and the... And the measurement on this, I don't think you can do it on that one. But let's do it on this instead. Let's just have a quick look at this. You know, that's actually a lot more interesting than, than I've given it credit for as well. So that's what we have. Let's let's call it a um, <clears throat> a rising wedge instead. Um, Obviously, this area down here does does give it that inverted head and shoulders look. That takes us pretty much where we are. Yep. Just there. Not too far off. It's not quite there, but it's not, not too far off. It's around about... Uh, we got within 20 pips of that that mark. In fact, got within 10 pips of that particular point there. So <clears throat> we have a um, 
uh, a trend line down here that when we put it as a, uh, as a, as a parallel line, it kind of leads us to these highs. We have a, an inverted head and shoulders, which measured move, the measured move actually takes us to, to pretty much where we are. Um, the weekly bar is, isn't formed yet, but, uh, you know, bad habits, um, you know, sometimes remain. And I'm looking at this bar forming and looking to see whether this could actually provide something of a, uh, a reversal bar um, only on a Wednesday, which, as I say, is an awful habit because there's plenty of uh, trading left in this market. Um, and, uh, and we have a market which is currently moving to the downside. Uh, and, 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 and all these other aspects in the market, the golden week from Japan, GDP data from, uh, from the United States, which is the only thing that, uh, that, that's out this week that we know about, which may well bring this market to the downside. So, uh, so another, another reason why um, I'm, I'm so, so concerned with, uh, with getting into the market um, at these high levels, no matter where it comes from, because this is, this is my trade spot, no doubt about it. That's, that's the point I, I, I should be getting into this. Um, but um, my uh, my suspicions are that we come down here, bounce, and and, th and then start to turn around, and, and uh, I may well end up getting a trade at the highs. After ignoring all these these moves here, I ignored this one because there was a uh, a move to the downside. I ignored this one because I thought maybe we'd um you know we, we'd we'd find a, a, a some sort of resistance point here. Um, so I continue to ignore these highs, and you know it, it gets to the point where you think. Finally, I'm going to get in and it's going to turn around at that point. And I'm just not prepared to do that after waiting so long. I prefer it in some respects just to keep waiting. You'd be you'd be good to be on holidays at the moment, <laughs> not, not having to worry about it. Oh, I, a, I should be on. Set an alert. And uh, when it gets down near you, might come back. Yeah, do you know what? You're absolutely right, mate. Yeah, absolutely right. And, and as I say, I'm, I'm battle weary when it comes down to uh, the patience with this market. Um, and uh, and and you make a, a, a the, the 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 most valid point because that's exactly what I'd like to be doing. Uh, market breadth is currently just it's opened up uh, a little bit soft. Forty nine percent actually uh, to, are still to the upside. There's about three that are flat, and the rest of them uh, are, are down. Even though we've uh, we've got this sell off, what that says is that some of the bigger um, some of the bigger um, uh, parts of the market are, are probably dragging this one down. I'd quite like to see what the oil um, stocks are doing today. What's uh... Let's just have a look at Dutch Shell. Yeah, oil, all stocks are a, a little bit softer currently, and um, and you, you know, you, you, this, this is the um, <clears throat> this is the thing that we, we we always have to look at. This is this is Royal Dutch Shell. Now, yesterday's move. Uh, just about took us beyond the, uh, the the high here, not not by uh, anything convincing, but it did take us beyond the high, and that was off the back of Donald Trump's announcement of the um, of the waiver from uh, from Iranian oil. Uh, this one started to drag to the upside. The same thing happened with BP, um, and then the rest of the market just uh, just just uh, continues to give it the boost. But uh, but but right now, Royal Dutch Shell is, is just moving to the downside. I wouldn't be surprised if it gets caught down here and, and, and you know, gets another boost. But um, but this is one of the one of the bigger players in the FTSE 100, which could um, which could just curb the enthusiasm a little bit in uh, in early trading. But actually looking at stocks uh, on the whole, the barometers are, are suggesting that uh, the market breadth, sorry, is suggesting that um, a sell off is um, is still unlikely today. Fifty one percent now in positive territory. So. Uh, you know, we're seeing, we're seeing the market ease to the downside, but the market breadth is uh, is not matching that uh, that sentiment. So, as, as I say, some of the bigger guns are probably the ones that are are dragging it down. Um, on, the back, uh, on, on the back of what do you think? I guess on the back of a um, on the back of a uh, an extraordinary rally. You know, BP is is down half a percent. Um, a breakout in in oil uh, yesterday uh, really did boost up some of those stocks and and, uh, and another extraordinary boost to the upside. Um, so profit maybe there's just a yeah, I guess so. I guess so. There's there, there was nothing that I heard or read before the markets open when I do my my little bit of research, which would suggest that uh, that these markets are um, given any specific. Um, uh, been giving any, any specific uh, uh, catalyst to move to the downside. We are seeing WCI come off a little bit. 
So, you know, obviously that's going to affect BP and, and Royal Dutch Shell. So as, as that comes uh, comes to the downside, it, again, this is at uh, a, a point of, uh, of a, an extreme after an incredible rally to the upside. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks without any retracement whatsoever. So no down but, week within the last two months. Really no sign of it either on that chart. You have to say no. I mean... Uh, where are we at right now? There's the okay. high there. We're at resistance, but that candle hasn't finished yet either. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely, and and, it, and it's going to be interesting. The the, the one thing about oil uh, that uh, that that's has softened it somewhat this morning is the report. I think that the uh, the US is is uh, probably the inventories are probably a little bit um, stronger than uh, first assumed. So that's why oil is um is just weakening uh, just mm. a shade. Okay. But uh, but yeah, aside from that, so just just quickly check the um, the Asian markets one more time. I've got new candles when you're ready to, so we can have. Okay, great that. stuff. Uh, looks like the Nikkei is, is ended um, fairly weak. I'll uh, I'll bring these in properly uh, properly in a second. You you go for your new candles, and I will double check the uh, the Asian markets. Okay. Uh, let's go in reverse, shall we? We'll start with, um, that's oil I'm looking at. Uh, what was Ash was talking about? Let's start with Aussie CAD. Um, this is the tale of woe that uh, befell me this morning where the EA didn't trigger my trade. Anyway, uh, let's not dwell on that. That's just an opportunity. <laughs> no, let's not dwell on it. What am I seeing now is, is most important. And uh, that big sell-off on the Aussie news, of course, uh is now looking to either a consolidate or b retrace i don't know why that won't disappear but it won't. um and we're seeing that of course that's no surprise monthly pivot you would expect something to happen there and something is happening whether that is a sustainable retracement is another story but 30 pips is is nothing to be sneezed at and it looks like we're coming back to the bottom of this channel. This channel, of course, uh, is this one here. And if that's the case, uh, this this dog may not be dead yet. You know, the the bullish run, if you like, that we're seeing. I I'm going to. I don't often do this, but I just want to know. What's going on here? Yeah, I thought so. All right. Um, just for my own edification, I just wanted to know whether that was a fib bounce, that one there. So, yeah. This, this is interesting. The fact that we got to the monthly pivot on the back of news is one thing. The second part of this is you see exactly where price is right now. That's a fairly substantial level. In terms of recency, uh, we've had a heck of a time breaking through it. And we also turned the market around back in uh, September of 2018 at that point. So we're now trying it from the top side, having broken through it after all of this work that would, that had been done. So that's a little bit interesting for mine. Maybe this is a, uh, a fairly decent level of support for Aussie CAD. If we think that oil is going to retrace on the back of that, uh, maybe we're seeing that, you know, in short term trading at the moment with the retracements uh, that we are seeing. But I, I think if tomorrow I wake up and, uh, and find that this candle is either inside this, uh, this uh, channel or indeed on the other side of the monthly pivot, I'll have a fair idea of what's going to happen next. So I'll, I'll be looking at that very closely in the morning. I won't be looking to trade it now or anytime soon. Uh, in particular, uh, maybe I would, maybe I would. But gee, a lot of water's got to go under the bridge here. Uh, what I'm looking at, of course, grab that trend line. There we go. What I'm looking at, of course, is is one of two things: a a retest of either here or there, and both, or and or both. Uh, but there's also another confluence coming up here as well. There's a pretty strong level sitting right here around about 95-ish, oh, really, the figure. 
so if price gets back to there, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, something may give yet today. I'm not sure what that's going to be, to be fair. That would be a decent retracement on the news move. In fact, it would take it back pretty much to where the market turned in the first place before the news hit. Yeah, I think that's an interesting level. So I'll be looking for price to get back there before I made a trading decision, I think. Uh, but again, if I see price back inside this range in the morning, uh, I'll be looking uh, probably to trade it long. Which is interesting, given the uh, circumstance surrounding the Aussie at the moment. But also, uh, the CAD being so aligned with oil, if oil does start to come off, maybe that is a trade. We'll see. That was a long way around going nowhere, but there you go. EuroCAD, um, there's nothing that interests me here on the 30-minute chart right now, uh, so I'm, I won't go any further with that. One thing I would say is that we've got a potential reversal of momentum. I won't call it reversal trend. Potential reversal of momentum in this rejection area. A lower high may be of interest, uh, but I'm not seeing that at the moment. I'm only seeing uh, a little bit of maybe challenges of the high, and that doesn't interest me at, at all. Euro pound, uh, let's get rid of that. That's just a mess. We'll put that on a four hour chart, which is where it belongs. And so what we've got, well, we've got some crazy, crazy bar here. Mm. What the, is that all about? Yeah. On Euro pound. What the I mean, heck? the pound's in all sorts of trouble as well because, you know, of, of, uh, of the Brexit mess. That certainly doesn't look like it's clearing up anytime soon. I wish I knew what that was. Why, why uh, that that what day was day, that? It's the craziest today. It's a crazy time of day. It's right on the change. New Zealand open, you know. Why? Mm. What, what the heck? Doesn't make sense. Um, but anyway, it's there. So the, the price looked as though, for all intents and purposes, it wanted to go down and then whooshed us straight back up. Still hasn't tested the daily pivot. I'll try to read this in my own mind, guys. And it's not making a whole lot of sense to me, I've got to say. Uh, the candles I don't like either. There's a lot of shadow in all of these candles. No, I'm leaving it alone. Uh, cable. Yeah, look, it's it's under a lot of pressure, as you say, Ash, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And and now the cycle has gone pretty much where we were getting, you know, bullish momentum and bullish trend in high highs, high low, high high, high low, high high, but now lower low and a series of lower highs, of course. So that's looking anything but bullish now for mine. Uh, how do we how do we look to trade? That's the question. We've broken through the support level here. I think I need to find something else. And I don't know. Well, as always, you know, I'd much prefer to trade short off resistance. Uh, but where is that resistance? <clears throat> Maybe it's here. See, I'm going to have to wait a long time. I'll, I'll be like you, mate. I'll be. Um, I'll be um, stir crazy by the time I get up to here. So no, that's that's a long way off. Euro yen uh, again, price is a long way away from where I'd like, well, where I see it being, and that's daily pivot, and that's a good thing if we can find a way to trade it to there. But there is no way to trade it to there right now. We've still got bearish momentum. Nothing's changed that. Uh, I need to see some sort of reversal situation here before I trade it long. So it's not there either. Euro Aussie, uh, as you would anticipate on the back of that Aussie news, we've seen a big rally in this cross. I don't see any, uh, you could maybe call it a double top. I don't know that I'm that keen to do that, but yeah, I suppose technically it's there. So when that happens, uh, after, in particular after a big rally, uh, and I see a, a reversal situation here backing up, that uh, that double top, I I'm inclined to have a good look at it, but it, it doesn't need to be a bear bar. I don't trade bear bars short, so it needs to be something different to that, something more akin to this 
or uh, a bit bigger than that, of course, but something that tells me it's rolling over. Uh, so I'm looking for a shoulder here, if you like. Uh, not that it's a head and shoulders, but I'm looking for something that's going to roll over. And you could say that's kind of it, but I certainly wouldn't enter the market there. That's not the way I trade. So there's no, no trade there either. The Aussie, can it revive? Can it actually come back from that bad news? Which is bad news. There's no, no two ways about it. Um, are we at a support level? We smash through the monthly pivot. The support level is really only the bottom of, of what I call the range, which has been, you know, broken many times now. Maybe this is all of them being false, of course. Maybe this is another one. Maybe it's not. Maybe this is the real deal. Um, I'm too early to tell for me. And I need to see some signs like uh, closing inside the range or, or then coming back inside the range at the moment that's not there so again uh it's sit on the sidelines uh euro dollar well we've spoken about the euro we've spoken about it at length and i'm yet to be convinced as i said that uh that this is going to fail this level is going to fail the 112 mark i would change my mind of course uh if this low well i don't know about change my mind but i, I need to see the extreme low taken out so I need to see a close below here before I start thinking, yes, we're on our way to the uh, to the seller. So whilst ever I'm getting, you know, double bottoms, higher lows, uh, I've got to be trading to the upside here. I know it's counter momentum, it's counter trend. It's probably counterintuitive. It's probably stupid, but, but that's the only way I see. And uh, until I, I I get that change, then that's exactly what I'll, I'll attempt to do. After all, you know, it makes sense to me. If we can't get through here, continually can't get through here, well, what happens? Every, every time we reject it, we go long. Every yeah. time we reject it, we go long. It, it's not brain surgery, really, at the end of the day. So if, if we again fail here and the signals are there, then, you know, you're entitled to trade it long. And that comes, I guess, with candles, uh, with um, same type of stuff you're looking for every single day. You know, a hammer matching a low. Why, why wouldn't I be long here? Why aren't I long here? Well, two reasons, really. One is I'd be trading straight into the daily pivot. Not that that would have been the case when that hammer formed. But I'm sound, I'm sound asleep when that hammer formed. And since that hammer formed and I wake up, I see this sort of price action and I think, well, I don't really need to get in right now. I'll get a second opportunity here. And that's exactly what's in my mind. But I'm, I'm absolutely seeing that hammer there matching this low. And I'm thinking, I'm, I'm going to wake up in two or three days' time and price is up here. And I'm going to go, what the hell? How, how didn't I trade that? Um, so, you know, that's absolutely in my mind right now. I just need to have one of two things. The kahunas to actually trade this right now into resistance, which I don't, uh, or I have to wait for the opportunity to arise. And that's the way I will choose to trade it. So uh, I, may miss, I may miss it if it goes fast, obviously. But what I'd really like to see is, is price get out of this noise area uh, maybe above the the daily pivot, maybe maybe turn into a false break, a genuine false break of this trend trend line here. So price get back above here, then retest it. Then I look to trade it long. There's the uh, I found a plan. I've finally got a plan, Ash. Um, oh, good. It took me a while, but I got there. Um, let me see if that's going to be available on a smaller time frame. So. Uh, look at a pinch at a real pinch uh, this is a bit steep this trend line I've got to say not not a massive fan of it but it's kind of there kind of um, the false break is forming I don't know that I like the trend line I suppose it's worth a shot if this if this candle were to close decisive and bearish 
maybe at around about this level. She is only tiny. There's enough room though, definitely enough room. Um, maybe I'd like to see it match these uh, these lows here, these clothes here. That would give me a better a better shot at it, I think. Yeah, somewhere down here. I'd like to see this candle get down to here and then trade it long. So I'll come back to that um, when it closes or if we're, here, if we're still here in 14 minutes time. So that's a, a potential one. Uh, pound yen. Can't see this doing anything. The only thing I had was there. That's now gone. So I've got nothing else. I don't have a confluence to trade from. So I'm going to leave that one alone. Dolly Yen, look, I'm still keen to trade this. But it's showing me absolutely nothing in terms of, uh, yes, time to go. It's up and down like a yo-yo, to, to coin a phrase. Uh, so what do I need to see is the question. And really, I, I don't have too much to say about that um, because it is so messy. There's really nothing, again, available to me in, in terms of a trend line. Maybe I can put this one up here. And, oh, gee, wait forever. Again, wait forever until I've got a confluence of daily pivot and trend line. Maybe I get another couple of lower highs down here. I don't know. It, it's really messy. I want to go long, but I'm snooker. I can't. And Aussie Yen, uh, there's the, the trade that we closed. Uh, we closed it bang on that red line, and that's exactly where we are right now. Uh, I really have nothing to do with this again until we get a decent retracement. And, you know, up, up here would be superb, and I'd be looking to trade that short again. But until we get that, uh, I'm on the sidelines. Mate, it's not a happy... Um, a happy uh, hunting ground at the moment. It's very much a case of sit on the hands and, and wait until they pop up. But as I said earlier, if you're prepared to do that, they will come. Yeah, well, absolutely. And, and the thing is, you know, you, you've managed to get a, a decent trade from yesterday anyway. And uh, there's no point in uh, in trying to get something which doesn't just doesn't fit. No. Um, <clears throat> so we have got uh, what we're looking at. About fifteen minutes <clears throat> before the um, before the the, uh, the 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 German data is out. Uh, quickly show you the um, the, the first two hundred. I'm I'm looking. It, the market is starting to to move down to this level down here, which would be uh, uh, certainly an area that uh, that could be traded. But whether it will be is another question. But uh, but it could be traded down here. So it's a little bit concerning actually uh, as it comes down to this level that this bar is uh, is such a. Uh, significantly uh, weak looking bar at this current stage and if uh, if those th that German data comes out and the, and the market dries right down to here that's going to be a pretty bearish uh, significantly bearish opening um, for the uh, for the FTSE 100 so I'm not too sure whether I'm, I'm, I'm that keen on, on trading that either way um, just looking across the board FTSE China index 50 down around about uh, 0.6 of 1% so just over half of one percent. Hong Kong, uh, the Hang Seng also down uh, half of one percent. Um, the FTSE 100 obviously down right now, around about a third of one percent. The Cacaron is quarter of one percent, maybe to the downside. Nikkei uh, ended quarter of one percent to the downside, and the DAX, the Central DAX, is slightly uh, slightly positive um, as we speak. So. Little bit of a mixed picture, but generally speaking, markets are a little bit weaker across the board. Market breadth has turned negative, only 35% of stocks currently in positive territory, so it has turned negative. And for this to turn around at this point, that you know, things are going to have to turn around probably across the board, but um, but yeah, just a little bit of weakness out there, or or, or maybe some significant weakness there. There's, there's, there's some profit taking going on here. I, I don't know how significant that ends up being, but um, but it's there. You know, it, it is that it is there, and we, no, we've had a few. I mean, yeah, really, how how far do they go before they do get something off the table? 
Yeah, you, you have to you have to question it. I mean, we had something uh, here which uh, which started, uh, you know, looking like it was uh, going to be a, a continued move to the downside, and that was you know broken and, and swallowed up fairly significantly. So it, you know, things might uh, things might still turn around at this point, but um, but certainly right now it's it's opened up negative and. Um, it does uh, it does kind of like leave things on on a, a wait and see mode. Back to the uh, the weekly chart. Now it's all going to depend on how this um this weekly bar ends up. This is what I really want to see. I, I want to wait until next week, I suppose, because I'd love for, uh, to see this uh, as a as another week uh, looking bar, um, suggesting that we go into April with um with a with a with a dip, um, which wouldn't be that unusual to see uh, April start to dip. So, uh, sorry, May start to dip. So I I just quite like to see whether this this bar ends up. Just being a little bit weaker, but aside from that, mate, I, I don't really have anything else. <clears throat> I, I was checking out gold yesterday and seeing that um, it did weaken, um, or it did continue to weaken. But uh, but it's I, I guess it's going a little bit more slowly now. But it has broken through these lows, and it could well come now down to this trend line here before it's sitting uh, on a uh, significant EMA there. That's the two hundred EMA. Yeah, and it also looks like it's it could be sitting on a on a trend line there too. So I, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see gold have a little bit of a rally from this point as well, if not a rest anyway from the downside. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's um usually around about fifty fifty when it comes down to uh, gold in May. So um, it's probably not not a, a tradable opportunity, but but it would suggest that as you say, maybe a maybe just a bit of a rest uh, if nothing else. Don't we they all need one of those every now and then? Oh, we do, mate. We do. Uh, Just say, uh, give me an alarm. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> all right. Um, well, it, I, th I think we'll wrap it up then. I'm just going to go back to the euro and uh, repeat the trade that I will take if it does set up. So I'll share that with you before we uh, have a uh, little break. We've got a meeting coming up later in the evening, so... Uh, it's probably dinner time for me. Uh, right, so we're kind of on the way here. Um, again, I'd probably like to see this get to here. So 112, even if it retested 112, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, but 112.05 is kind of the minimum, I think, I'd like to see this, this candle get down to. And if it did, I'd place along above it, taking profit and... 100% have to do this. It's compulsory. If you follow these trades, you have to take profit before the daily pivot. Absolutely compulsory. It's, it's, it's always the same. If you go back to that pound yen trade I took yesterday, and, and I didn't really go 100% on this, got to take, you've just got to take profit. And uh, we missed the, the TP all here. The, the target was like two pips below the monthly pivot, if I recall. And I think we missed it by about 1.2 pips or something like that. But um, that's exactly how I trade. You know, it, it's support to the resistance, resistance to support. It's always the same. So uh, if you follow the way I'm trading, I've got to, got to take profit at this resistance level. And if you don't and price comes back this way, you're going to look pretty foolish. So um do that and your target is this trend line so wherever that crosses if it gets to um this level here take profit um you might want to keep it open a little bit but you've got to got to take profit at those trend lines so that'll be it ash for me it's euro dollar long only if this candle gets down to here Okay, nice. It's around about one twelve oh five. Okay, sounds good, mate. That sounds like a, pr a pretty good wrap. We'll, uh, I guess, we, we'll, we'll be in to get in, in again tomorrow, and and just hope that uh, if this market has come down significantly enough, which is unlikely, then uh, then we will be looking at something in the FTSE tomorrow. But probably just a, a little bit more uh, analysis of where it comes to. It's possible that there'll be a long on um, if it's come down deep enough, and it and there's signs and signals of uh, of a further push. Uh, may well push into that GDP data. So let's see where we're at, mate. But let, let's come back tomorrow. Same uh, trade time, same trade channel. All right, mate. Happy days. We'll catch you then. Uh, actually, I'll catch you in a meeting in a couple of hours. But um, yes, we'll catch, yes. Catch everyone else.
uh, at that same time. See you guys. Have a good one.